Joining me now is Madeline Brame, the chairwoman of the Victims' Rights Reform Council. Also with me, Paul Morrow, attorney and former NYPD inspector. Madeline, let's start with you. You were on this show once, and we got a huge reaction to your appearance because um, you and your, I mean, your son, a veteran, was brutally attacked and murdered. Uh, his killers got sweetheart deals from Alvin Bragg. Uh, but I know you have strong feelings about Mr. Penny, given what he put on the line and what's happened to him since. Absolutely. You know, um, it's unfortunate what happened on the train that day. The city of New York, the entire apparatus has completely failed Mr. Penny and Mr. Neely. Mr. Neely had no business even being on that train, period. Mr. Penny even didn't even should have never even been put in that position where he had to defend himself and other people. This is a soldier, a Marine. He's trained by the United States government to protect and serve, okay? If you have a deranged individual on a locked, moving subway car, okay, threatening to kill people and shoot people, his natural instinct is going to be to protect and serve, just like the 63-year-old woman felt. Mm -hmm. Them people were petrified on that train, because I have my own experience mm -hmm. of being locked in a, in a moving subway car. And we have video, we, yeah. have, we have some video yeah. of that. Let's uh, show it now. People just started running, stampeding me on the train. I lost my shoe. They broke the window and I stepped in glass. I'm bleeding. This is real. Hundreds of people just started stampeding to the cars. We were locked inside the train. This is real New York. Paul, this is real. To, it's real to everyone who's mm -hmm. experienced this. It's terrifying. When you're in close, confined space, mm -hmm. it takes how long for someone to slash you, attack you? He said he didn't mind if he went to jail for the rest of his life. What does that tell the passengers? I mean, when you consider the body English, right, Laurie? He took his jacket off and he said, I'm done. That's pretty definitive. And you're in a confined area. There's no place to go. You're looking around for respite. And, you know, people say, well, where were the cops? Where were the cops? You can't have a cop on every train car. It's just numerically impossible. Mm -hmm. We're lucky we have cops in some of the major train hubs in light of the fact that recruitment is so far down and retention is such a challenge. So the idea that there is this vacuum in public safety, the very people who are weaponizing this vacuum, and we all know who they are. This is the AOCs of the world who've called this murder instantaneously, mm -hmm. racialized it White immediately. White supremacy. White supremacy. Mur murder. Murder. Meanwhile, one of the people who was helping Mr. Penny appears to be a person of color, a male of color. And here's the other dirty little secret. You know, it's very politically incorrect to say, but I'm just going to say it. The victims on the subway, the targets, are generally women. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's just the truth. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to say it because, oh, God, you know, it gets into all kinds of murky territory that we're not supposed to touch. But that's the truth. And there's a reason why one of the women on that train said, I'm praying for him, and I'm going to go right to the Fifth Precinct to give a statement on his mm -hmm. behalf. And then another woman, a woman of color, as you just said, called him a hero. If you are on that train as a woman or a male, but if you are, let's say, a husband, a father, a brother, and that is somebody in your family, don't you want it, Daniel? Well, don't we want men to step up and, yes. and, and protect of and course. defend? Anyone who's trained to do so or, or just wants to help? Of course. And Why are they after those other two? You mentioned one might have been a person of color. Right. Could they actually charge? Those two individuals of uh, aiding and abetting a possible manslaughter? My gut would be no. I don't think they will, if you're asking me to guess. Um, but I'm going to tell you what else. Remember, this still has to go to a grand jury. We don't know six really months what they have to do. have a they have grand six jury months, charge. Yeah, with a little give and take. But, you know, Manhattan juries, as left as they are, take the subway. You only need one to hang a jury yeah. if you get to a trial. Madeline, um, again, this idea that heroes are criminals and criminals are misunderstood. Mm -hmm. How is that playing in the minority community? If you can make a broad generalization. Okay. Um, to Madeline. sum it up, if Mr. Penny had been black and that had happened to Mr. Neely and both of these individuals... But if the races black, had been reversed. Yes. Yeah. We wouldn't hear nothing about this story. Just like we don't hear anything about all the black-on-black -black crime that's happening in our community. As soon as it's a white cop or a white person 
who does something to a black person, then all of a sudden everybody wants to play the race card, okay, and be the AOCs of the world and use the words like lynching and, and all kinds of different things like that. And everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. I can tell you something right now. In the black community, we're sick and tired of it. We're tired of it, then, all right? Well, so what should the political answer be to this? Because the voting pattern among most African Americans mm -hmm. is reliably Democrat. Democrats in charge, this whole city is Democrat. In charge of all the Democrats running it. What's your message to them tonight? To leave, it's time to leave the plantation of the Democratic Party. It's time to leave. Because we have got nothing but dilapidated housing, failing schools, crime, unemployment, abortion, and every other horrible thing that you can absolutely think of. Paul, one nothing to ten, how change. angry are the uh, other people of New York over this crime issue? One to ten. Seven. Uh, you know, I think people, people are waking up. It's pretty bad. Yeah, you don't hear about it, but on the ground, it's pretty bad. I live here. Madeline, Paul, thank you both for being thank here you. tonight. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.